Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I've got a one versus one for you today. This one is going to be on Williamson's Bridge, and it is between two really good players, Search for Destroy and Zlow. Search for Destroy is taking Cybern in the red color in the north corner, and then we've got Zlow as blue UEF in the south. This is about as classic a matchup as you could possibly ask for between two players who are within about a hundred rank of each other on the ladder. Let's go ahead and dive directly into this game and see what it brings for us. Search for Destroy is throwing down a land factory. It looks like two power generators walk to a mass extractor and then walk to a very convoluted build here. Looks like we've got a uh, mass extractor factory. Oh, the whole thing has been canceled. That was a misplaced order. <laughs> We can see what his general plan of action is, though. That first engineer is going to be out and about for some manual reclaim, grabbing everything that it possibly can as it winds its way across the map to get those mass extractors. Then we have a hunter heading towards the south base, where progress is looking about the same. Looks like Slow is going for a little bit earlier air build. He is going to get those power generators down and you can see how these guys are using their move orders very very strategically he's going to walk that acu in to where he can reach that mass extractor oh he ooh, is he going to be able to build that one nope he's going to have to uh, readjust his panties there yep there he goes back on track He's going to have to get down that mass extractor there, lay down the rest of his P-Gens, and then he's going to get an air factory online in the middle of all those for a little bit of that tasty adjacency that we all love so very, very much. Uh, actually, an engineer coming in to assist that build, I think. He has a similar manual reclaim order headed out that way, and then an engineer headed all the way around the back to hopefully take care of all those mass extractors. And then we have a tank engaging in a furious battle of wits with a hunter. It is going to win. A little bit of a micro fail for Search for Destroy. He didn't quite dodge a couple of those tank shells. And then a uh, good bit of usage of that striker there for Zlow. So that is going to stall the initial raid. We do have another hunter moving around the back, though. So usually there's an engineer hanging around in the back somewhere. Sometimes there will be power generators going down, whatever the case may be. That hunter is going to try to search out whatever it can find to kill. Looks like we have a scout moving up the middle for Zlow. That is going to provide some much-needed intel on what is going on on the other side and probably set up for, yes, a bomber. There's a T1 bomber building for Zlow. Looks like he's going for mad bomber action. He's actually going to get a lot of that in because looks like we're rolling straight into a third land factory for Search for Destroy. That's going to be a very strong land build. But the question is, is there going to be a lot of damage done by these, this bomber? Maybe Zlo goes for a second one. I'm not exactly sure on this one. Looks like that engineer is going to successfully cap that mechs and move on with his life. Where did that hunter go? Probably got zapped up by that tank down there. And that Mantis is going to pick up the Reclaim Engineer on that side. So Bomber away. Yes, a second Bomber. So we're going for double aggression here. Probably going to force Search and Destroy to, uh, well, not Search and Destroy, Search for Destroy. But you know what? That's a good song. So I'm probably going to slip up several more times before this cast is over with. Two tanks versus one. Going to be an obvious winner there as long as the terrain doesn't get in the way. And, of course, the terrain would get in the way. That other bomber is going to be laying down fire on the Mantis over here. That's going to be a bomb on the P-Gen. going to take out three P-Gens and a mass extractor. Search for Destroy losing out on quite a bit of power potential. And that bomber is going to come around for yet another pass on those P-Gens. We have a third bomber out. Good lord, and a fourth building. Zlow is just pouring T1 bombers out. I guess he figures, hey, if this other guy ain't going to build any interceptors, then why not build a whole bunch of T1 bombers? That's going to force him into building a ton of Sky Slammers, and that's going to cripple his tank production, of which I have none. So that bomber is going to swing around the outside edge, probably going to try to peg that engineer, and then possibly that mass extractor one way or the other. We do have a radar out that is going to help track some of these bombers. That is four on the map, and a fifth building. He's just going to keep going. We have barely enough tanks online to help deny this mess, and he's actually going to get a little friendly fire going down there on that tank. And, uh, yeah, bombers, bombers, hither and yon, everywhere the bombs do fall. Zlo's going to move up on that middle there. There were some walls placed, which honestly is kind of a good strategic decision. I can totally understand why they were there, but that radar is going to go down thanks to that ACU fire, and he's just going to casually reclaim all the wall sections and walk right through. Walls do not do very well versus engineering units. 
Let's see, we've got five bombers, some of which are starting to go down to that fire, but they are eliminating mass extractors, eliminating tanks, just generally being a pain in the buttocks for everybody involved, and he is still building bombers. I think that's going to be number seven coming out, but hey, when you've got no opposition in air, there's the first interceptor building for red. So we're about to see the end of the domination phase in the T1 bombers. Ooh, three kills on that one. But man, has it been a good run. The only problem here is going to be the fact that Red is going to have a couple of more tanks out on the front line. Uh, Zlow is building up very, very quickly. He will be able to challenge shortly, but uh, he poured a lot of mass into those bombers and it definitely, definitely paid off. Search for Destroy down to 15 mass per tick and he is sitting on 1,000 reclaims. Zlow, on the other hand, on 1100 reclaim, 100 difference, not too terribly much, and about 18 mass per tick income, steady. So that is going to be a little bit of an advantage for him. And there goes the capture on that T1 point defense. The capture is going to be, I think, actually a little bit faster than killing it with a T1 commander without the gun upgrade. So, yeah. All your base are belong to us, and the T1 bombers are still pouring in some AOE on those large clumps of units. That Valiant Striker trying to stand in the way of the progress of that army did get a veterancy, but he is going to go down. Now, Surfer Destroy is forced to pour some mass into Interceptors, but he is going to push Slow back into a little bit of a corner, honestly. We've got a handful of tanks here, but there are more Mantis, well, some of those are Sky Slammers. I suppose that he did toggle the fire to ground. He might be able to lay in a bit of damage with those. Um, but overall, looks like about an even matchup. But, uh, yeah, let's see. Red is holding pretty much all of the left side and a decent portion of the right side as well. He's going to be able to kill off that engineer with that group of Mantis that got through and uh, move on his merry way, taking care of what he wishes as he goes. Looks like he will score a couple of mass extractor kills and potentially get into the back of the base. Goodness gracious alive, that is a T2 factory for Zlow. He decided that he was going to invest that mass into pillars, which honestly is not that bad of a choice because pillars are going to be able to deal with uh, T1 very, very effectively. That is, uh, looks like we're still pouring down, yep, that is going to go for T1 production. Still putting down T1 factories. There was a re right there. Surf for Destroy has scouted that T2 factory. He does know that it's there, and he has once again pulled ahead on mass income thanks to all of this raiding around the outside edges. That ACU is going to be able to engage those Mantis, I think. Yep, just barely pulling into range as long as the uh, terrain issues sort themselves. And there we go. Mantis getting squashed like the pitiful little bugs that they are. Well, at least compared to the ACU anyway. That is going to pretty much wrap up the early game, I think. Things have settled a fair little bit. Zlow is sitting on a couple of T2 tanks. He's got enough on the map to pretty much deny anything that is thrown at him. We've got a pretty severe mass disadvantage for him, but he is going to be able to reclaim some things once this combat starts happening again, because I think with the couple of T2 tanks that he does have on the front, he's going to be able to outclass the Mantis Swarm. Once that engagement happens, he will be able to reclaim after it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the reclaim numbers as they stand. 19 to 16, so 300 mass advantage. Eh, that's about six tanks. Nothing too shabby, but nothing that's going to drastically change the game one way or another. Slow moving up. Unfortunately, does not have overcharge yet, I would assume, due to the fact that he did not overcharge that nice little clump of units that presented itself so beautifully for his consumption. And uh, nope, he does not have an energy storage. Definitely needs to be thinking about one of those at some point in the near future. Tanks are, s or not tanks, ACUs are still mighty machines of war, though, even if they do not have overcharge search for destroy kind of standing off at a safe distance there and on the south side looks like we may be ready for a tiny little bit of aggression we now have a good handful of t2 tanks online that's going to be eight on the board seven of them moving towards the south side that's going to cause some problems for search for destroy who actually has his own t2 land factory up he's getting a t2 gen that is unbeknownst to slow because low has not scouted in quite some time uh, not that that's going to be anything that he can't handle, but he is going to get a sucker punch when those rhinos start moving through to the front. It's going to be a little bit difficult to deal with. 
So Zlow is going to be able to take out those Mantis. Fortunately for him, blocking the fire on that radar, he can actually finish the radar with his unupgraded commander to have intel on the front. And the swarm on the south side taking care of all of those extended units that Zlow had left out. The Mantis Swarm is strong with this game. Looks like we've gone to a, a one upgraded support factory. So we've got uh, and a second one online, or just about. So we're going to have three T2 factories pushing out for Zlow, who is now on about the same income as Search for Destroy. This is going to be a loss of a tank right here. Search for Destroy has an overcharge, which I don't think he does either. Really? I don't think I've ever seen that before. Why are you people not building overcharges? Seems very, very odd. Oh well, 15 shots, 15 seconds, he can destroy that son of a gun anyway. This is going to be an interesting matchup right here because we have, let's see, a grand total of two T2 tanks, a numerical advantage in units, but the front line on this grouping is comprised of nine Count them nine pillars. So those are going to be able to engage very favorably with all of this T1. Little bit of kiting action. As long as you keep them clumped up together, the damage potential is incredibly high. Tank for tank, the Rhino is actually stronger than the pillar is, but they do cost more. So you got to kind of figure that into the equation. Here's the engagement. Looks like Zlo is going to run. I'm not entirely sure why, though. He does have enough there, unless he's trying to draw the mass back closer to his base so that once he eventually does engage, ah uh, yes, Red is getting a little bit more uh, tentative about his approach there. This is a nice little clump of mass that uh, Zlo really needs to get his hands on in order to get back up on top in this. He is holding the middle, which is very nice, and he's killing that T1 mass extractor from up on the ridge. Coolio, coolio. Yeah, for those of you who are wondering, this is actually a bridge up above the rest of the map. Um, I was kind of confused by the terrain when I when I first played this map. I was like, why is it called Williamson's Bridge if there's a valley down the middle of the map? No, no, that's just me not pressing the space bar and panning over to the side. And there is a flapjack. If you're wondering why he's building a single mobile missile launcher when there is not a single T2 point defense on the entirety of the map. That is because the mobile missile launcher is essentially a base destroyer. It's like an upgraded version of the T1 mobile artillery. So you're going to be able to stand far behind your units on the front line and attack anything that is stationary. So that unsuspected little bit of damage, the 300 damage pop anytime that thing connects, and then you can actually reach out and kill mass extractors even if you can't get tanks back there to deal with them in person. So it's a very, very useful tool if you're able able to push it out where it needs to be. Let's go ahead and take a look at the reclaim numbers. We got 4,500 for Search for Destroy and 39 Manager, for Zlow, but Zlow is about to take over this mass field once again, and he's already got engineers moving up in the rear to deal with it. Looks like we got the gun upgrade going down for Search for Destroy. That should provide for a little bit of excitement as we move forward with this, and there's exactly what I was talking about, not having to redirect those tanks toward the south at all. Keep them all on track, denying those units, and kill off all of the peripheral items with the mobile missile launchers. Doing what they do best. Looks like these T2 tanks are going to be moving up directly for the base. There are three rhinos here, but uh, stop running. Why are you running away? No intel. Still no intel. I don't think I've ever seen a 2000 rated player who didn't scout. And we're seeing that now. It hasn't exactly bitten him yet, but this has got to be making things more difficult. I mean, he doesn't even have radar on this section. He could have just raffle stomped that group of units and plowed straight into the base, and he did not. I don't completely understand. He is topping over 5,600 reclaim, though. He is in a little bit of a power stall, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because he is relatively balanced, and the reason that he's going down on a stall is because of reclaim. So he is uh, boosting his mass income past what his power grid can handle. So 62 on that and 54 for a search and destroy almost exclusively thanks to this reclaim field right here. So yeah, that's going to put Zlo in a little bit of a lead, and he does actually have a superior mass income now. He has got a T2 mass extractor down between those two factories for maximum adjacency bonus. And on the north side, we have not a single T2 mechs that I am aware of. So Zlo is coming back 
from his little bit of a loss of map control. The early bombers were phenomenal. Did a fantastic job of suppressing the expansion, but then Search for Destroy just had so many more Mantis on the map than Zlo had tanks. I think partly at least due to that jump to the T2 factory, but uh, yeah, the T2 factory has treated him very, very well up to this point. The only problem he's got is that there is a gun upgraded stealth ACU wandering towards his unupgraded commander. So this is potentially lethal here. Um, if he is not able to deal with that ACU, search for destroy, does he have overcharge? Yes, he does. He has a T2 P gen backing him with 300 power um, over what he needs. He's going to be overcharging repeatedly without any fear of running out of power. That's going to be a beautiful thing for him to use. Obviously, since he has a stealth upgrade, point defense is not going to see him unless he purposely walks into vision range. He's going to be able to engage just about anything at this stage of the game from the relative safety of his cloaked commander. He's just going to keep pounding away, actually eliminating the entire wall section and then hitting the wall behind that point defense. Glitchy sons of guns walls are. Overcharge finally dealing the damage he needs to eliminate that. So that ACU is going to be pressing in. That's going to force a little bit of a withdrawal. Uh, Zlo pulling back some of his units. He still has that flapjack online, which is up to uh, two kills there. Almost to a veterancy, actually. Nice. And still sitting on the one. Oh, there, there's one in the front. That one has a veterancy. Four kills on that one, so he does have two. And see, sniping that radar from way in the back. It's interesting to watch someone who has the high APM and the map awareness to actually pull off little little kills like that. You don't really notice them that much. They may not be extremely flashy. It's that little poke, little prod in the right direction so that you're confusing your enemy, forcing him a little bit off balance, all that stuff that we talk about that's good in RTS games uh, on a regular basis. Let's go ahead and check in on the economies. Once again here, we've got Zlo sitting on 6,900 reclaim on... Uh, is that 37 per tick, or has he got reclaim bumps going on? 27. That looks a little more accurate. To 18 mass income for Search for Destroy, who has reclaimed 61 to 7. So about 800 reclaim ahead at this point. A couple of T2 tanks, something like that. And we do have another air factory going down for Zlo. So it looks like he's going to be doubling down on his air production. He already has more interceptors. So I think this is going to be a win for him in this division. Looks like the ACU is running all the way around the backside. I'm not sure if that was preemptive or not, but that is going to keep this group of T2 from getting into his base. He has plenty of units for a denial on the left. I think he can match anything that Zlo can throw at him from that left-hand side, but this is a little bit of a different story. He looks like he's going to withdraw just a little bit. Don't get too spread out, bro. And now that all the units have shifted to the other side of the map, he is going to start raiding with three Mantis. Surprising what kind of damage three Mantis can do if they don't have any opposition. Going to claim all those mass extractors on that side and pull up a little bit on his mass income, even though he is still behind Zlo by a fair little bit. Looks like Zlo's got another T2 mass extractor. He is bridging for adjacency between those two factories. And yeah, he is set up for a very good game right here. At this point... Search for Destroy is going to have to go all in in one regard or another because he has a limited window with which to make use of this commander before the unit count gets so high that he can't make uh, make good on the potential with that combat commander. There's another mechs going down and the radar going down for that flapjack up to six kills and every one of them has been a goodie. Well done on that flapjack usage, bro. And ooh. That is not quite so pretty. Which one is going to win out on this? Let's see, we got seven rhinos, but the point defense is a problem. You can see the Medusa is continually stunning it, which is actually very, very nice. But they're about to walk into the lethal grasp of Zlo's commander. There's enough T2 tanks to be dangerous. Does Zlo have... Really? Really now? Commander under attack. He has overcharge but he does not have enough power overflow to be using it continually. <clears throat> so he is going to, uh, let's see, burn two overcharges, I think, there, and that was enough to get him out of the danger area. So very, very slim um, clearance on that win there. Not sure how to describe that accurately because my vocabulary is apparently seizing up. Search for Destroy, however, has no such power problems, and he is going to absolutely mow down that uh, group of pillars. 
Couple of overcharges there, double kills on both of them, and he's probably gonna land another double with that one. Awesome Medusa stun going down there. And uh, Zlow, OMG units! Yeah, that, that was not the smoothest retreat ever. So now, we do have a little bit of a superior red presence on the left. We have the gun comm moving down the center. The air is strong for Zlow, but not so strong that he's going to be able to completely seize control. The right is a problem, though. Search for Destroy does not have anything over here to deny. He is fully invested in the left-hand side, and there are a total of seven pillars over there plus another pesky flapjack. He did kill the one in the middle, I think. There's a fresh one there and a fresh one there. So he's dropped two of them. There's another on the left side. So you don't have to build many of them. Those flapjacks are very, very useful for other things than base cracking. Who to thunk it? Who to thunk it indeed? We do have a couple of triads over here. So Zlow actually taking a ridiculously defensive posture on this side. This is the one that's kind of open to interpretation who can win on it. These guys aren't really pressing that hard over here. No ACUs over there for the majority of this game other than the first little bit there. And uh, yeah, it's kind of swapped back and forth several times. Red is now expanding once again. And this is going to be, I, I don't think that's a good position to be in. He does have engineers out, so he is reclaiming that wreckage. If he extends too far in this direction, though, he is going to get cut off and he's going to lose all of those units in that corner. I'm surprised at how little air is being used in the later portion of this game. The bombers were ridiculous at the beginning, but then it just kind of all left off and we haven't seen much of the air since then. Pillars clumping up, some streaming cyber units. You all know that uh, streaming is definitely not as strong as a clump. Those early units are, or the forward units are going to get slaughtered and the rest are going to retreat. So we do have a little bit of a stalemate reached with roughly 50-50 map control, barely favoring Zlow, and Zlow is sitting on 31 mass per tick, while Search for Destroy is sitting on 24. So still a superior economy, but we've got 12K reclaim for Search and 10K for Zlow. So we got 2,000 mass advantage towards Red, at least in this portion of the game. Ah, I spy a little mongoose. Just going to be laying down a bit of area of effect damage on those units. Nicely done there, folks. And Search for Destroy is going to move up just a little bit. He needs to be careful, though, because there is getting to be quite the number of T2 units on this side. He does have that stealth gun commander. So if he kites backwards and has plenty of overcharges at his disposal, he can deal with thousands and thousands of mass worth of T2 units. He just has to be careful not to misstep. Because if he gets too far forward, that is going to end very, very badly once the units get around where they can fire at his commander and possibly cut his commander off from retreat. Zlo is really busy putting down those triads. He's kind of advance a little bit, build a couple of point defense to secure the location. Advance a little bit and repeat. It looks like he is going T2 on the commander. Why not gun? Seems like that might be more useful when you're versus a gun commander yourself, but I suppose he has his reasons. He is going to drop T2, and hopefully that will do something good for him. Search for Destroy is within four mass per tick of Zlow now and still ahead on Reclaim. So that is, uh, he's actually on even footing at this point, and it looks like he does have a good amount of units out. He is re-rating all of this stuff that was gained by Blue just a few moments ago. That lone Medusa taking out a mass extractor over there. So well done on his part. He is back in this game in a strong way. Still not quite enough units on the right side. We do have a nice little mass of pillars that's moving up. Zlo just doing a phenomenal job of transferring his economy into tanks. Looks like he does have that T2 mass extractor built there. That's going to give him a total of four. So even if he loses the entirety of his expansions, he is still going to have that reliable income there. And let's see. Yeah, 24 income just in his home base. Search for Destroy is going to pop ahead, though. 35 to 31. This is going to be tough to deal with, though. When you get that many pillars in one spot, you have to answer with either a superior force or an ACU. And Search for Destroy is getting out a little bit ahead of his units. That's not entirely healthy, bud. You don't have enough units backing you up. You do have scouting intel, 
with the air over your ACU, that triad is going to be able to fire at you. Looks like he was going to try to get some overcharges in on those tanks, but the terrain is not going to let him. He's now got a T2 ACU pursuing his commander, and here comes... No! Don't run that way. Run towards your commander. There you go. Got to get some of those reinforcements in range to hopefully effectively engage this horse for Zlo. All right. That is going to be a stalemate. He's going to stand off a bit and lay down some fire on that ACU with his superior range. Nicely done there. All right. Three veterancy on that for a total of 13,000 health, 16,000 with one veterancy and T2 or slow but remember as long as there is intel on this commander that triad will be able to fire so he's got to be careful of that finally enough t2 units on this side that slow is not going to be able to powerhouse his way directly into the base so that side is going to be relatively safe but slow is re-expanding and getting all those mass extractors very very quickly so he is up to slightly more income than search for destroy has looks like search for or not search for uh slow is on 13,000 reclaim and exactly the same for Search for Destroy. These guys are neck and neck in economy, neck and neck in reclaim. Just the unit count is favoring Zlo at the moment, and this is going to be nasty. We got a T2 commander backed up by mobile shields and a veritable horde of T2 tanks. I'm not entirely sure. It looks like for the last couple of minutes, Search for Destroy has been devoting his entire economy into upgrading his economy which if he can pull out of this uh, bad unit situation, he should be okay, but this is not going to be pretty. Pillars moving in in force, overcharge taking out two. The mobile shields are going to be a problem, each one of them canceling out an overcharge on their own. Rhinos are going to move in. Hopefully they'll be able to save this commander. 6,000, 5,000 health dropping rapidly. Pillars are just everywhere, but I think Search for Destroy is going to be a... No... Oh, there we go. Veterancy, 6,000 health. That works. We have more pillars moving around the north side. The rhinos are thinning out at the moment, and Search for Destroy is just not able to kill them all fast enough. There's another overcharge. Yes, four kills on that one. Can he get to his final veterancy? He's at 107, needs 120. T1 point defense going down. There's the T1 commander for it, or T2, building that point defense very rapidly, and that is going to be the end Ouch. Search for Destroy did exceptionally well on that, I feel, in just kind of trying to deal damage as he could. But in the end, he just overstepped. And Zlow stepped up his economy early and had been producing units that entire time. Whereas Search for Destroy slowed his flow of units and was upgrading his economy in an attempt to match and surpass Zlo's income, which uh, had he had, you know, one or two more minutes to go back on tank production exclusively might have worked for him. But as things stand, Zlo just slaughtered that commander with a vastly superior number of units. <clears throat> Alrighty, folks, that is going to wrap it up for me. I hope you enjoyed this game as much as I did. That's It's always nice to see well-balanced top level players because you can see all the little tips and tricks that let them do so well at this game like the mobile missile launchers and all that kind of thing uh, just strategically using your units to the max of their potential as always thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in the next one